It's been a year since SpaceX CEO Elon Musk unveiled the Starship prototype, a fully reusable two-stage rocket that the company aims to use for interplanetary missions. Uh, this, is, this is, I think, the, the most inspiring thing that I've ever seen. Um, and I'd just like to uh, thank the, the, the SpaceX team and the, the suppliers and um, the, the, the people of, uh, of, of Boca Chica and Brownsville. Uh, thank you for your support and uh, just like, wow, what an incredible job um, by a, a, such a great team to build this incredible vehicle. Uh, so I was like, first of all, I want to start with that. Since then, and after a series of tests, SpaceX has announced that it is ready for Starship's first test flight. Starship serial number 8 is scheduled to perform a 15 km flight test by mid-November. The flight test will demonstrate that the Starship can ascend into the sky, freefall, and then land safely. This video focuses on the 15 km flight sequences that the prototype is about to perform. We have discussed the construction and test phases of serial number 8 in our previous video. Check out that video for more details. Link in the description. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for future updates. So, with no further delay, let's move on to the topic. The 50 meters tall and 9 meters wide Starship serial number 8 is currently resting on Starship Launch Pad A at SpaceX's Texas Launch Facility, waiting for its 15 kilometers flight test. The Starship SN8 vehicle features three Raptor engines and four aerodynamic flaps. The flaps will be tested for the first time during the flight. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk disclosed on Twitter that SpaceX had tested a subscale version of the flaps in a wind tunnel before, so it will probably work full scale. Prior to the 15 km flight, the ship will be filled with liquid oxygen and liquid methane, which acts as the oxidizer and fuel required for the flight. The fuel tank is located above the oxygen tank. The ship also contains two header tanks, one for oxygen and the other for methane. The propellants in the header tanks are used for landing burn during touchdown. When the countdown reaches zero, all three Raptor engines will get ignited and the rocket will be lifted off from the launch pad. Each Raptor can generate a thrust of 2,200 kilonewtons at a chamber pressure of 330 bar. Once the 15 kilometers altitude is achieved, all three Raptor engines will be powered down. Once the engines shut down, the rocket will flip 90 degrees onto its side. At this point, the rocket will be falling unpowered back down to Earth at a velocity of 60 to 70 meters per second. The landing event will be unique because SN8 will use a belly flop maneuver for the first time in the history of space flight. Unlike Falcon 9, which performs a powered vertical descent during re-entry, the Starship's horizontal belly flop maneuver has certain advantages. Any spacecraft that is entering into the Earth's atmosphere, targeting for a soft landing, has to decelerate to a safe velocity before touchdown. Starship, which returns from an interplanetary journey, will be much faster than Falcon 9's first stage during re-entry. The only sensible way of shedding that much energy is to aerobrake. Aerobraking is free, whereas propulsive braking needs the same amount of energy as accelerating in the first place. This requires to carry more fuel on board, resulting in a much heavier vehicle. Belly flop maneuver of Starship eliminates this problem and can reduce the vehicle's total mass and fuel expenses. During the fall, the vehicle's only source of control will be the fins attached to the rocket's base and nose, which will work like air brakes. Powered by two Tesla battery packs, the fins will move back and forth like a skydiver controlling his descent by moving his arms and legs. The fins will be part of a closed-loop control system, of the sort that missiles use to follow pre-programmed trajectories. They will be controlled by electric motors, instead of hydraulic systems. Then, once it is only a few hundred feet off the ground, the Starship will flip back to an upright position, reignite its rocket engines, and perform a powered landing. Both fins and reaction control thrusters together aid the Raptors in this process. Reigniting engines and changing a vehicle's orientation at around 60 meters per second is a very complicated task. Because SN8 is so big, the maneuver will also cause it to oscillate at least once, like a pendulum before touchdown. It is a delicate, highly choreographed maneuver. If anything goes wrong along the way, 
SN8 will meet its demise, along with the ground, in a spectacular explosion. But, if the flight is successful, the whole mission will move a significant step closer to undertaking more challenging orbital launches. When asked about his speculations about the success of the mission, Mr. Musk wrote on Twitter, that a stable, controlled descent with body flaps of the Starship SN8 test vehicle during flight would be great. Transferring propellant feed from main to header tanks and relight would be a major win. But, a rapid unscheduled disassembly right off launch pad is also possible. Understanding exactly how the body flaps control pitch, yaw and roll during descent, such that the ship is positioned well to relight, flip and land, would be a big win. A Twitter user asked him, if SpaceX engineers would direct Starship to fall into Boca Chica's ocean, if relight does not occur. Musk replied that, SpaceX has the plan to redirect the prototype into the ocean, in case of a failed Raptor reignition. Although if it fails right at the end, some landing pad repair will be needed to fill in the crater. He also confirmed that, SpaceX would live stream the 15 km flight, although it might be quite a short live stream. SpaceX hasn't announced an official launch date yet, but mid-November is the target. Landing or no landing, the test flight of SpaceX's Starship prototype SN8 is excitement guaranteed, and it is not something you'll want to miss. So, what is your opinion about this historic flight that is about to happen? Share your thoughts in the comments. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for future Starship updates. And as always, thanks for watching.